this is what it looks like from the inside, but you're wondering what that big black box is. Um, that's actually um, the black water tank. Um, it was really, it was a real issue for me to kind of figure out where the toilet would go, where the plumbing would go. I mean, all these fit inside of each other. I couldn't put it in the main one because the <coughs> box went closed. Um, so when all of these come out, it drops down, and obviously they're going to be, they're obviously going to be four feet off the ground. So when this last piece comes off, this box drops down to floor level. So it's also a support on the other end. Um, and it allows the toilets in there. It's not too scale, it's just for demonstration purposes. Um, but once that box, box drops down, it supports it on the other side, and the toilet's sitting right on top of that, and the water um, the toilet can just flush into that. Um, I'm also going to use waterless toilets. Um, obviously, it doesn't use water because in this set I'm going to use all that water. Um, so, the less water I can use, the better. The bottle of water is more important. So you use the waterless toilets. Um, it's for maximum capacity. Four people can use it part time. Six people or six people part time. Four people full time. So it's um, it's great for cottages. You'll see in the specs book. Um, they use them in a lot of smaller spaces. Um, so we do a floor plan. Um, this is it all closed up. So all the furniture I use within the space obviously had to fit into the closed module. Um, so you can see all these different pieces out here all fit and they're kind of stacked up um, and then the bathroom goes here and that obviously gets lifted up into the structure when it's closed. Um, the exterior walls, I was able to make them so thin because of a product called Super Therm that gets painted on the outside. Um, it's got an R value of 20 which is extremely high for a coat of paint. Um, so that's how I was able to make the walls so thin to kind of eliminate the uh, thickness of the walls with the insulation. So I have a module for the day and for night because obviously the furniture transforms. Um, these two tables, they're the exact same um, table. I'm incorporating two of them within the design. They have three different levels and then the highest level that can also be opened up. Um, so there's two of those. There's two um, couches that then fold out into double beds, um, as you can see right here. And then these are desks on the back side. And then this is also a desk with um, storage that folds out into a single bed. So this is just a little close up. Um, this wall right here is a potable water wall. It's about two feet thick. Um, so it'll hold that potable water that also drains into the, um, the, for the shower and then also for the kitchen unit um, with the sink right there. Um, this, all the, the whole bathroom is open, the floor is slightly slanted um, to put the water into that drain. Obviously because with the ADA accessibility and the size limitations, you can't have a bunch of like, showers and tubs and all that, thing, all that in there. Um, these are some of the perspectives. I did each perspective, one view of the day and one view of the night. So this is from the um, where the bathroom is in that corner, looking out into the, um, the living room area. So you can see this family interacting during the day with the living room, the TV on the wall, the couches, the desks are folded out. Um, and also at night, the, um, the furniture is on wheels that lock. So you can just turn that around, allowing that um, privacy. Um, so this is obviously a little private place, and this is a private place for sleeping. And the coffee table was just moved over here, and it's now a nightstand for both of the beds. Um, this is one from the kitchen, um, again, day and night. Um, and you can sort of see in this perspective, this table is a little bit higher than that. Um, so obviously the adjustable height takes place there. And this is just another one from um, the living room, and obviously the open spaces. You can kind of see my little shadow figures are elderly people. Um, it's great because all the floors drop down one to left, onto one level. The floor is open, um, so they won't have any trouble moving around. Also, the furniture is very easy to pull out, so they won't have any trouble with that at all. Uh, so these are just some of the exterior perspectives. So you can see it when it's all closed up on the truck. Um, 
the way I designed it is they stay on the wheel, so once they're in the shipping yard, they're all ready to go. Disaster strikes, the truck can just back up, hook up, and go. Um, and then once it's there, obviously, um, you can see the kind of the, the supports. The supports are also adjustable to, um, to put on land that isn't necessarily flat. So you don't have to worry about having flat land because you can adjust the legs and the footings. Um, so you can see this is all open. You can see how that thing, um, that what folds out, I showed you the, um, the model, and kind of folds down. There's also a piece, the other half of the container over here that folds up is sort of on it. And then this is just an aerial view um, with a container. Um, there are solar panels right here that get folded in, and once they open up, they fold down and get locked onto the second piece. So then you have the solar panel, you have the lock-in on the roof because there's obviously going to be a gap that comes in when you pull it out and drop it down. And there's rubber that attaches um, to the solar panels that then gets pulled down and attached on the side so you don't have any, obviously, open spaces. Um, this is my ff &E. I based the color scheme off of the butterfly going back to my um, original inspiration image. I wanted to bring color back to their lives. Um, so I took this picture of an Australian butterfly because there were so many colors in it and I incorporated it um, in all of it. I took it all from this area so you can see it all in that color scheme. Um, the wood flooring right there is actually vinyl wood flooring. Um, it's from a company called Flexco. Um, it's very, it, um, it's antimicrobial um, so it, no bacteria grows on it. It's very clean um, and also um, that tile up there is a rubber vinyl tile. Um, that they use in like hospitals and industrial um, places. It's also very clean. Um, all of this furniture um, is normally made of wood, but the company um, I'm specifying it be if you made of high qual or um, high density polyethylene plastic. Um, so that's the same material that's used to make the um, changing tables in public res uh, public restrooms. <laughs> um, so obviously very clean, um, so it can be cleaned between use. Um, so you can see this is that single bed during the day, at night, this is the double, and then those are the tables of three heights and then how it opens up. Questions or comments? <laughs> So that's there for like 
and then there's also lighting incorporated on the furniture, on the size of the furniture. Um, and then there's also going to be light incorporated, um, like desk lamps and things included in that. Um, but I really wanted to put as many windows in as possible. There's um, three big windows. They're about um, four feet wide, um, five feet tall along this back wall. In the bathroom, there's two windows that are a little bit up, obviously for, for privacy. Um, each of the sides that comes out, um, those have giant windows. And then there's two windows um, in this kitchen area right here. Did you give, in, in your sort of your study, did you also look at those things that didn't look? Was, or did you just only look at successful things? Right, I mean, in your present study, you show us three sort of setups that really work well. Did you consider that we could learn from what doesn't work? Does that make sense? Uh, well, when I chose my question studies, I chose things that were current and relevant, but that had aspects that I didn't like. Sure. Um, so obviously with this, it takes a long time to put together. It takes a lot of people to put together, and it's really permanent. Um, once it's up, it's not that easy to take down. Um, with this, like I said, there's space inside, comfort shelter, but it's not really a house. Um, and then obviously with this, it's again a long time to put together. All of them are so close together. Um, so while incorporating that sense of community, it doesn't really give them any privacy. Um, so I did look at what did work in that sense of what I did want to incorporate in. I have a question about the original presentation talked about these and containers. Mm -hmm. So take us between a container right now and how it becomes that. Somehow I don't feel like that wasn't really explained to us. Somehow we got to this retracting box. <laughs> the shipping container is the original form. Um, so I can go back to it on this. Sorry if you get dizzy. So the shipping container is the, um, the shell. just the, the general shell. The um, outside shell. Yep, yeah, so you can thing. see over here, this is the door, it's the same as this. And then this is the other side of the container that sort of gets clipped up, and then there are just these lighter inserts that get put inside that can be pulled out. So the original container is just really one of two units. Okay. And so you're retrofitting them with windows. Right. You're cutting the windows in, and then you're putting the type of paint on the outside for insulation. And two new units. And those are brand new. Right? Yeah. I don't think you talked about it. Yeah, they're all different sizes, obviously, because they have to fit right into each other. So I did as many inserts as height would allow. So how, how are you planning for the, the power requirements that are needed to run this? You talked a little bit about plumbing. The solar panels, um, because the space is so small, it doesn't require that much energy. So the solar panels will obviously take care of. Like all the heating and cooling and... Because it's not the super thermal on the external, you don't need heating or cooling. Or don't need necessarily that much of it to produce. Yeah, I have a question on how accurate that is. I, again, growing up where it gets to be 110 degrees on a good day, um, a fan and opening a window unfortunately doesn't work. Um, she showed Christian in my studio was so awesome. Super, yeah, it's like there are a piece of metal that they actually coated with this material and they lit it on fire. It was like glowing metal and the guy just touched it where it was painted. It doesn't, heat doesn't uh, transport in. Wow. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, it's also if you have a site where you put this, I think it's not a big technical problem right. to get electricity. Oh, yeah. Right. Just in your camping 